Hello, another kit review for you today, and um, this is the um, brand new Boeing 737-700 in SAS livery from Big Plains Kits. Kit number is 7228, and this has been kindly sent to me by Alexi over at Big Plains Kits. So uh, let's have a look at what we get. This is 170 second scale, so it's a decent sized model, um, and it's, you know, a 737 in 70 scale, it's beautiful, it's just... It's just the right size. Uh, 144, they're tiny little things because they're small airplanes. And this one is only the 700. It's not the, the great big, like the new one, the 10 or something, isn't it? It's just, it just looks like a hot dog, doesn't it? It's crazy. Um, so this is the 700. So you can see here around the box, we get two options in the box. It looks like we may get more. Um, we've got the first one here, which is 1998 to 2019 schemes. That's when the 737-700 was... Uh, was first uh, used and then in the second scheme we've got 737 700 2019 to today you can see the difference in the two schemes there basically the same other than the red engine and the flash going down the tail and here you've got this lovely big decal on the side which is very nice indeed so it's made in ukraine as i say kit number is 7228 um on the side of the box here it's exactly the same um and you can see we've got some information there about the aircraft should you wish to pause and have a read so without further ado let's have a look inside the box a lovely artwork isn't it beautiful so typical of big planes kits we've got all of the parts in one bag all nice and tightly bound up so you won't get any damage sorry about that i had a delivery then so uh, yeah as you can see all the parts come in one big bag so it's all nicely packed and everything and nothing's going to get damaged so what we can do first of all is get into this bag and by doing this we're going to rip that sticker in half. That's how you know that nobody's been in here since it was packed. So we've got a lovely little box of accessories in there and I know what's in there. It's going to be lovely. We've got our clear parts here individually bagged up all looking very very nice. And then we've got various sprues, fuselage sections. So we'll have a look at all that in a minute. First of all, we'll have a look at the decals, which look gorgeous, and we'll have a look at the this box of bits as well. So, right, in here we have our decals. That decal sheet looks stunning. And as you can see, sensibly packaged, so when you take the decal sheet out, the sticky side of the bag is on the back of the decal sheet. Of course, you can turn it over and stick it to your bench, but uh, careful not to get rid of those corners. So, there we go. There's our sheet there I did notice in here we will have to be careful with this one because we have got the decal side towards the bag there we go um, and then here we have masks so we have masking sheet it's all in here this kit you don't need to buy any aftermarket for this whatsoever everything is here everything you need so we've got masking sheets there we've got masking sheets for wheels and tires and the actual main cockpit and we've also got masks for all the individual windows down the side as well and i'm looking here i can see we have masks very strangely we have masks to go around the outside of the windows as well as the i don't it's very difficult to see maybe it will show us in the instructions so we have an instruction manual there but here we have decals so here we have the SAS there, so that's right, okay, so for some reason, okay, yeah they've made the mistake here of having the silver going right across by the look of it, so that's why they've given us this extra set here. I don't quite know what these lines here are for, they are actually separate decals, so those little dotted lines there are showing us that they are separate decals. They're very nice. And we also get two sets of windscreen frames. So I don't know why we've got two of those. Great. We've got spares. Okay. Well, maybe they're too big or something. They look a lot. Look, they are the same size. Yeah, very strange. Don't know why they've given us another set of those as well. So there we are, but beautiful. Um, we've got all the decals there for the cockpit. You can see the instrument panel and everything. We've got the, the little um, spirally things for the front of the engines. You've got a spare one as well. You've got three there, so that's a nice touch. All the decals to go around the doors, all the window frames here. Very, very nice indeed. 
Lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely jubbly. And we've got the uh, emergency exit there on the top of the wing, which I'm sure you've seen if you've been on a 737. So lovely, yeah. Very nice. Um, we've got Scandinavian there. I've got Scandinavian there, so I don't know why we've got the larger one there, we've got the two smaller ones there. On the box art, you can do the old version, so it just says Scandinavian. Um, maybe it has Scandinavian on the wing or something. We'll see in a minute. Okay, so they're a beautiful set of decals, um, as always with big planes kits. And we also get those addendum sheet as well. So, having got the instructions, um, small booklet, it's about, looks like it's A4, sort of folded over, maybe a little bit smaller. So we've got our main fuselage parts here. Sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Some history of the aircraft there, so you can have a read of that should you wish. We've got all our colour callouts, colour callouts, colour callouts <laughs> in um, Mr. Hobby and Viejo, which is very nice indeed. And then going into the uh, instruction manual, we have all our sprue layouts. So all very similar to the Poseidon and the E7 that I've already reviewed. Um, lots of sprue sharing going on here. Um, and then we've obviously got the windows there. We've got our clear canopy. And then we've got some resin parts here. So we've got the, um, the APU at the back. We've got the engine intakes. We've got engine parts there. Seats. Pilot seats. We've got some photo etch here. We've got the additional photo etch there for the floor. There we go. So there's our cockpit going together. Check your references for your colours and everything, depending on what aircraft you're doing, because I think some of the uh, colour callouts in here are um, perhaps a bit in an error. Um, so we've got undercarriage going together there. So you can get resin wheels for this, or you can just use the, the kit wheels, which are perfectly adequate. They've got lettering on the tyres and everything, so they're very nice indeed. And then here we're building up the main undercarriage bay. And then we've got our lower wing section going together. It's all very nice. We've got these uh, rings here which go around the tyres. And you've actually got to cut some of those rings away if you're going to build it with the uh, with this in-flight mode. Okay, so that's all very nice. And then we've got the, the main fuselage halves going together. You don't actually need to put the cockpit in at this point. The cockpit will drop in afterwards. So if you're, you know, you're worried about damaging it, or getting sanding dust all over it, you don't need to do that. You can actually build this up. Um, and then we've got the tail sections going together here. Uh, we've got these little parts going in there. It's not showing us here, but I think we need to cut some of this away. I think we need to cut some of this belly panel away. Or is it shorter on this kit? No, we need to cut that away in the rear there. It doesn't show you that. Um, so you need to make it flush. And then we've got the uh, tail skid thingy going in there by the look of it. And then we've got our... Um, so I heard somebody call these canoes. I'm not sure if that's the right name for them, but they're the actual fairings for the flap actuators. And we've got the same gun on the other side there. Notice we've got the winglets on the end of the wings. All looking very lovely. Make it look proper airliner style, didn't it, having them on there. And then we've got our um, tailplane going together. Nice to see on the drawing, at least, we've got a location here now for the, um, for the actual pins to go in, because you've got these two pins you've got to use to go in on the other model I've got there's no this lower piece isn't there um, so nice to see they've added that and you've got the pins there for the uh, for the tail planes as well and then the resin parts going in here and then we've got the engine pylons going together engines going together if you're a fan of Uger uh, his YouTube channel he's done some great models uh, what he does is cuts this lump away from the top of the uh, fan blades and then you can slot the intake in after rather than have to build it up together like this so um, that's a nice touch. And then we've got some uh, PE parts going on here. We've got the fairings going on the engines. I'm sure you've all seen those if you've flown on a, a CFM 56 equipped 737. And then we've got the nose going on with here with the, uh, with the windshield. And then we've got the landing lights going in. Some uh, antenna and stuff going on the roof by the look of it. Looks like there should be some antenna up here that aren't actually here. They're not shown there, but they are shown on the box front, we've got a couple of antenna here. Got those two there in the kit here, but we don't have those antenna. So uh, make those out a bit of scrap PE or something. That'd be easy to make. Um, that noise you can hear is my chair squeaking. And there we are. So there's our colour callouts. So we've got um, colour scheme 1998 to 2019. You can see here we've got these little decals going on the belly there. 
and then we've got Scandinavian on the engines Scandinavian across the top very nice indeed we've got the airlines here in white underneath it's a very nice looking uh, livery actually isn't it this is obviously more modern this is obviously the one you're going to go for um, yeah very pretty I'm hoping we get some yeah we do oh, that's where that Scandinavian goes it goes along the center of the fuselage so this is going along the center of the fuselage on the newer version so this is the this is the older version here so we're not getting an underside view of the older version and we're not getting an upper side view of the newer version but I'm guessing they're going to be the same um, yeah I'm guessing they're going to be the same because otherwise he would have um, yeah only for a new color scheme so these are all going to be the same only for new color scheme okay so all these stencils and everything and these walkway lines are generic and the uh, the lines there that's going to be some sort of emergency hat or something I'm guessing and there we are we go over the page here we've got all the details for the engine you can see we've got those spirally bits on the front there which is really nice and uh we got all our stencils and everything for the engine really lovely it's nice to see that alexi's gone to so much trouble with all these decals and all these beautiful um stencils and everything uh so i've got that one i've got that one i've got this one i've got that one i want to do that one i fancy i got one of these as well these um american airlines ones look really cool with the big uh, stars and bars on the on the tail i think i have to get myself one of these Maybe that one, a little short, tiny short one there, look. So yeah, right, let's have a look at the kit. So basically we've got a fuselage four and a half here. As you can see, there are no alignment pins, no alignment tabs or anything. It's not an issue, just uh, just um, just go with it. It, uh, it goes together absolutely fine. And the clear parts here, we'll see just how clear they are. Very is the answer. They're absolutely gorgeous. We can see here, you can see there's no distortion. In fact, you can hardly even see them. If I put a light on there that we're looking at parts, you could hardly even see the clear parts on there, can you? So they're very nice. Um, and they will basically sit in the fuselage like that. Make sure you get them the right way around. You've got the emergency doors there. And as you can see, the actual windows are smaller than the cutouts here. So rather than having individual windows or windows going in from behind, you fit these and um, and there you go. Excuse me, that was my stomach. Um, something that is interesting, if you look at close up pictures of 737s, where we've got panel lines here above and below the windows, they're actually overlapped panels. So they kind of overlap. So you would start here, this overlaps that one and then the top one overlaps that one. So you could actually put some steps in there if you want, but they do fit in there. You can see the panel lines line up absolutely perfectly. The door lines up there perfectly with the panel lines. Really, really nice. Um, might be an idea to fill those panel lines in because you're going to be putting decals on there anyway. But uh, hey ho. So yeah, very nice. I'm going to put these back to back so they don't scratch each other. <clears throat> so they can go in like that. Of course, if you want to do the Poseidon, you don't have the windows to worry about. If you do the E7, you've got the windows, you just paint them all over. Okay, so we'll have a look at another sprue. So we'll get these out as they come. So this is our engine sprue. This is sprue D. You can see here we've got our pylons with all the lovely rivet detail and recessed detail on there. We've got the back of our fan there, and then we've got the back of the turbine here. We've got resin parts to go on there, so we'll have to remove this raised ridge here. Obviously, this kit originally had plastic parts. This raised ridge will have to be removed and that raised ridge on there will have to be removed because we've got resin going in there. Um, then we've got the intakes. Obviously the, the massive oval on the intake is because of the, the engines have to be flat on the bottom um, because they're so big compared to the old, uh, was it J57s these had? But uh, you can actually get a big planes kit if you like the old historic 737, the 200. Big planes kits actually do that one. This one is currently not available yet from Hannans. Okay, so we've got a bag of sprues here. <clears throat> we 
them nicely bound up so they don't damage each other. So get all of those out together. When you've got sprues like that, don't ever try and pull one out. You're likely to snag other parts. So we'll put that to one side. So here we've got one side of our belly. That's not a greasy finger mark. That's a polish on the mold tool. Um, got beautiful panel lining on here and all the latch detail and everything. Again, we've got no alignments down here, but we have got bulkheads on the inside to help line everything. And then we've got some of our um, canoes, if that's what you call them, uh, here. Um, and we've got some little cylinders there going in the undercarriage bay. I call them actuator uh, fairings. So that's those there. And then we've got the other side here, which is basically a mirror image of that one. Here we have, this is the uh, rear wall of the cockpit. And then we've got a, a wing stiffener there. And then we've got the rear wall of the um, undercarriage bay. Okay, we've got some various different fairings here for bits and pieces. Wheels, you can see we've got all the tyre lettering on the wheels and they are beautifully done. You can get the res kit ones to replace them if you want to, but they are lovely. And there's a little nose wheel there. Very nice indeed. And then we've got the actual nose section here with the anti-static strips on there, which is really nice. <clears throat> Sorry about a terrible frog in my throat today. And we have here engines. You can see the flat bottom there, rounded top. You can see how flat they are on the bottom here. Beautiful. Look, I love these engines on 737s. So they look bloody great. Little bits of antenna in there. So we do have antenna in the kit that we can use, um, even though they're not called out in the instructions. So do your research, look at the real thing see how it looks and then here we've got some uh, little bits and pieces so we've got the the shroud for the cockpit instrument panel got the instrument panel there cockpit floor we've got more nose wheels here uh, gear doors um, this is the um, the nose gear bay so you've got the the sides the back and the front um, and there's the roof of the nose gear bay it looks lovely when it's all together and then we've got all these bits and pieces here for the cockpit you've got cockpit seats which you're not going to be using because you've got some beautiful resin ones. You'll see those in a minute. Um, we've got some little actuators here for the undercarriage, undercarriage legs. So very nice, very beautiful little model indeed. Ear doors there. Note there's no ejector pin marks anywhere, which is a really nice touch. No sink marks, no flash to speak of. So yeah, all in all, a lovely, lovely kit. So I'm going to put this back as it was because those bags are so tight <laughs> um, and then we've got another bag here so this is our second bag <clears throat> second bag within the bag so here we have okay here we have this is our undercarriage bay roof and our undercarriage bay forward bulkhead there's those brushes there. You can see where the tires go up in. It forms a seal. It doesn't have undercarriage doors over the wheels. There's our main undercarriage legs. And then we've got our little winglets on the end there. On the end of the wings. They're going to look beautiful in that beautiful blue SAS colour. Very nice indeed. Got some supports there for the undercarriage legs. These little bits here will go in the undercarriage bay. Some control wheels there. This bar is going to go across and I guess that spiral painting on it. And we've got some more little details here. We've got parts of the undercarriage bay there and more parts of undercarriage doors. So that's very nice. We've got our tail planes here. A little bit of damage on the ends. Could have done with having the sprue coming out on over the ends, I think, which would have helped. But, uh, you know, you're going to be sanding these all down nice and thin anyway, so it's not going to be difficult to repair. So there you can see the inner walls on the tail planes and here you can see this is the actual fin itself as I said when we looked at the instructions it's showing here uh, where is it it's showing here that there is a lower wall okay for those pins to fit into but when you actually look at the parts themselves there is no lower wall okay so uh, in fact it looks like it might have been there and it's been removed in the tooling um, because there's definitely something going on there, but uh, it's simple enough to just put some plastic card in there, um, 
and just keep adding, you know, 20 thou one side, 20 thou the other, 20 thou, 20 thou, 20 thou, and build it up so that it's even, and then just drill through the middle and put your pins in there. But, um, I may even make a resin insert to go in there, we shall see. But uh, there we go. Very nice thin edge to the rudder there. So, all in all, extremely lovely. And they've got our wings here, they've got the sprue go around on the end of the wings so that saves them getting damaged, which is a nice touch. Um, it's looking, it's a little bit oily. It's a, it's a good idea to wash your parts anyway, whatever kit you're doing. But so uh, we've got top of the undercarriage bay there. We've got that ribs there for that main support that's going to hold the bottom together. We've got the trailing edge here, which is really nice. So you get a nice thin trailing edge. You don't have to worry about having glue seams and all that down there. But you do have a line here that you might want to fill. Um, and then we have the undersides of the wings here. So they're going to go in. They're going to be lovely. They're just going to sit in. Um, it's just going to sit in there like that and as you can see you get a you get a seam here we need to fill and then rescribe over and everything but uh, it's not the end of the world it's just um you know it's it's how it is it's it's you either get a trailing edge that you've got to work with or you have that seam you have to work with it's uh it's unavoidable it's a plastic kit it's a air, model airplane right so that's that and then finally we have parts here so this is our this is our rear fuselage as you can see as I said there's no there's no physical location for any of this it all just slides together but that's not a problem it's it actually adds to the fun of the build in my opinion but it does sort of frighten beginners um, and the newer modelers out there uh, I have a surprise for you so you shall see in the near future but um, you can see here on the top of here, there's a little bit of damage to the mold tool. I think there may have been an accident or something because when you look back at the Facebook page, when you look back, I think it's earlier this year, maybe late last year, there was a time when it was, he was saying these kits weren't available. And I think there must have been a, 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 a piece of tooling fell off a shelf onto another piece or something. But um, obviously there's been some repairs going on. You can see some damage there. But that's easy to just swipe over there with a sanding stick. That's it. It's gone. Um, but he's taken, the, taken this one off the sprue gates, so uh, there you go. And then this one just has that massive sprue gate in the middle. And I know what you're thinking, you're going to have a great big sink mark. Yep, you've got a sink mark, but it's behind those windows. So that glazing, that clear panel goes over there. You may wish to cut those out because we have here, we have open windows, but here they're blanked out. So you may wish to cut those out so that you can see through. You may want to put some blinds in behind and have it so it looks like some windows are down. Um, if you do that, I would seriously suggest put the blind on this side of the plastic and put the clear over it. Because um, if you put it in there, it's going to be quite far away from the um, from the clear part and it might look a bit odd. So there you go. Um, but yeah, this, um, as I say, this belly pan here. There's about six millimeters needs to be cut off of there because as you can see when this fits when this fits into the fuselage like that it sticks out at the back here so you're gonna have to cut about six millimeters off of that so that this can go on because obviously you can see it's gonna foul it all right but, uh, again it all adds to the fun it's a proper little engineering exercise this is definitely not a shake and bake kit it's definitely not Tamiya um, but they are a lot of fun to build and they really do require some, you know, some, some, some skill. They're not for beginners. They're for, you know, sort of intermediate to advanced modelers. And, uh, but the end result, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. You know, you can see the, the, the panel lining on here is so fine. And what I do like about this kit is the panel lining. It just the, the alignment is absolutely superb. Everything just lines up beautifully. Um, it's like when you look here, you can see here, if you line these two windows up perfectly here, you can see that panel line there lines up perfectly also. So it's, it's, it's lovely, it really is very nice. See the detail there on the, um, on the uh, AOA, 
adjustments for the tailplanes. Look at this detail down here with these hatches. Uh, that's going to be the access for the APU, isn't it, I think. And then you've got little hatches down here and you've got the, the cargo hatches here with the little stiffener panel on the bottom. So yeah, all in all, absolutely beautiful. But built up, you know, the size is just lovely. Um, and I'm looking, really looking forward to something that's coming out next year. But I'm not sure if I can talk about it or not, I'll have to find out. But um, I asked the question and he said yes, it's planned next year. So those of you who follow Big Planes kits will know what it is. I almost forgot this box. Now this box contains goodies. Beautiful, beautiful, lovely goodies. This is very nice indeed. You'll like all this. And it's so thoughtfully packaged. So, let's put that to one side. We've got the photo etch. I'll get my bit of black card here. Which the bag is stuck to. So here we have our photo etch. This is the 737-700. So you can see we've got a panel here for the, um, for the cockpit, for the roof. We've got our fairings there for the engines. I'm not sure what those bits there are. 15 and 16. Not sure what they are at all. Um, and then we've got some other little bits and pieces there. We've got some little um, little vortex generators there. Really, really nice, beautiful little antenna and everything. Rudder pedals in 70 second scale pitot tubes. Actuators for the doors. As you can see, it's all very nicely done and it's very, very thin. And then here, this is a little addendum. This is addition. He keeps improving these kits. And this is the actual uh, floor rail for the seat. So you can see the seat can slide back and go to the side, that will go to that side and um, to allow the pilots to get in and then they pull the seat sliding forward. So he's added that for the cockpit floor, which is really nice. And then here, rather than the plastic seats, we got all the plastic parts there for the seats. But here he's added these beautiful 3D printed seats. You can see they've got seat belts and everything on them. You've got left and right. Um, the seat belts aren't the same. It's really nice that he's done that. And they are gorgeous headrests and that on there. And there's also that nice rough texture like the sheepskin um, the covers they use. So you can see all detail on the back there. Not that it matters because you're not going to see it. But you can see the detail on the side of the seat there as well. Very nice indeed. We've got the actual clear part of the cockpit. So that's moulded in one piece, so it's really good, really thoughtful. Uh, this is obviously designed by a modeler, for a modelers, for modelers. Um, come out, please. I want to show you how nice this is. That's why I'm making a fuss about getting it out. So you can see here, it's got a mark on the inside. Okay, that doesn't matter because there's a that overhead panel goes over there. I would seriously suggest not using the photo etch. If you use the photo etch, you're going to have to use super glue or white glue. If you use super glue, you run the risk of clouding up the clear parts. If you use white glue, you run the risk of it pinging off, and it won't ping off when you've got it separate, it will only ping off once you've got the once you've got it glued to the fuselage. <clears throat> so, what I would suggest is make that out of a piece of plastic card, and then you can use Tammy Extra Thin to glue it into there. Um, but yeah, see lovely, lovely detail on the window frames. You can see that the windows are nice and clear. You're going to see all the detail in your cockpit, those lovely seats with their seat belts and everything. Very, very nice indeed. And also the way it's done, it fits beautifully. And you can see here that all the glue seams are well away from any clear parts. So for the newer modelers out, there's nothing to worry about in that aspect. But um, the rest of the model you might struggle with a little bit if you are new to the hobby. But um, there we go. Beautiful. Beautiful 707 front end. Yeah, apparently 707, 737 and 727 shared the same section up to that first panel line. And then they, got, they made the jets wider. The 707 carried on thinner, but this just got wider. Um, well, the original 717, which was the KC-135, should I say. Um, and then apparently the 757 actually uses the 707's fuselage. So I didn't know that. So there we go. We've got the little teardrop windows over the top there as well. I don't know why I call them teardrop. They're not teardrop, they're eyebrows. <laughs> I knew it was something to do with eyes. 
There we go. I'm going to put this back in this bag. I'm sorry because I don't want to get it scratched. So put that over there out of the way. And then here we have this is the best part of the kit, in my opinion. Here we have our engines, and you can see our beautiful, beautiful resin intakes there, the fans. Absolutely gorgeous with all the detail on there. That area in there, <clears throat> if you look in here, you can see there's a raised ridge. That area in there could be blue or a very light grey. It's actually like a wear panel and, and it's it's abrasive and the, the, the fan blades rub on it and actually it, the, the, it beds in and they get a really good seal to get a good amount of, uh, you get minimal loss. And if you look at close up engines, pictures of these engines, you'll see there's all sorts of different colours. So think about how you paint them because they're going to look stunning if you get it right. All these little bits of flash in here. So that's our intakes and then the exhaust here you can see this is the actual outer of the exhaust. You can see we've got detail on there. There's panel lines and rivets and stuff. Very nice indeed. So make sure you get them fitted the right way up. And then you've got these cones that go inside. Now I can't put them right in because they've got that bulge in there to aid coming out of the mould. These are cast. They're not 3D printed. You can see they're going to fit inside there and stick out a few millimetres. And this is what I was talking about with the engines. <clears throat> Obviously these pieces were originally plastic. They've made them a resin, so when you remove your moulding plug, <coughs> excuse me, God blame me, sorry guys. So when you remove your moulding plug, it's just going to be flat. You've sanded it flat, so you need to cut that ridge off of there, so you get a nice, uh, nice large area to glue it on. So that's all beautiful. And then here, this is lovely. This is lovely, lovely, lovely stuff. Come on, out you come. This is our 3D printed APU. So that's the actual, that's the actual tail piece there that's going to fit on the back of the aircraft. Okay. And then you've got the insert inside with the actual turbine of the APU. How beautiful is that? Eh? You also get them in plastic, so you might want to use the plastic ones. I don't know why you would, but um, there you go. So yeah, and that's obviously 3D printed. But yeah, absolutely gorgeous model, um, highly recommended. I love these things. And as I say, a 70 second scale 737 is just gorgeous. But if you want to do a military version or if you're scared of the windows, get the Poseidon. The Poseidon is bigger than this. It's about, it's about three inches longer than this, I think. So, you know, it's going to be like that rather than like that. You can also get the little shorter ones as well, I think. Um, but this size wise is perfect with its winglets on it and all the blue paint and everything. I would be tempted when I build this to get rid of the panel lines and have it all smooth. Um, you know, leave all this here, the raised area and the rivets and everything around the wing roots. But all of these panel lines here, perhaps get rid of them and have it all smooth. Um, the panel lines down the side of the windows here can be a bit awkward, but uh, I'm sure we'll find a way around that. Because um, it's, it's always awkward when you've got a panel line on a seam. It's always a bit awkward. Sometimes it's better to, um, it would have been better perhaps to have the, the windows slightly larger, have the panel line moulded into the windows, and then you could just sand the seam smooth where it joins the fuselage. But um, the other thing, of course, you could do is just fill it all smooth, sand it smooth, and then scribe a panel line just inside or just outside the original line. There you go. So that is the Big Planes Kits 737-700 in SAS markings, get rid of those bags, there it all is in its entirety and it's gorgeous isn't it? So there we are, have a quick look, get the bag off the instructions, there we go 7228 is the part number and that's the 737-700 in SAS markings and as I say you've got all these other kits to choose from as well. So there you go, thank you for watching, I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.